Good day, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rehab Gaming. So what we have here on our workspace is a Nintendo NES Advantage controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this thing a good thorough cleaning. After we're done getting it all cleaned up, we're going to snap it all back together and give it a test to see if it has anything wrong with it. And if so, we'll go ahead and make repairs. So stay tuned and we'll get right at it. So for starters, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and test the buttons and see how they feel. That'll give us a better indicator of if there's anything wrong with this controller and if we need to do any repairs to it or if we have to replace any button membranes. So first of all, the joystick feels okay. Feels a little bit squishy, but that's to be expected. The B button is nice and crisp, but that A button feels a little squishy. And it seems like there's less resistance down here compared to up here on the button, which could tell us that uh, this membrane for this button possibly needs replaced. We'll look at it once we get inside. Have our slow button over here. It's actually a two position button. We have our start button, feels really crisp. Select button also feels really crisp. We have our on and off buttons for our turbos. And then we have our controller switch right here. And all of those feel perfectly fine. So what we'll do is we'll tear it apart, give it a good cleaning, put it back together, and see if we have any repairs that we need to do to this. We're going to unscrew the cap for the joystick and set it off to the side. Then we're gonna go ahead and turn her over. As you can see, we have two screws right here in the center. And believe it or not, underneath these four pads are hidden screws as well. So what you need to do is get something flat in order to get up underneath these pads so we can peel them back and expose the screws underneath. Just like that, we've exposed the hidden screws underneath the pads. So we're gonna go ahead and take these six screws out and see if we can get this bottom off. And there we go. Now that we have the six screws out, Bottom plate just falls right out. Go ahead and take this bottom plate and set it off to the side for now. So what we have underneath is the main board for the buttons and also the board for the joystick. And then you have this clip where the wire goes into the back. And it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five screw, nope, six screws that holds the button board in. So we're going to go ahead and take those out now. So now that we got those six screws out, what we're going to have to do is turn over the controller and take out the turbo knobs. And one of them's being a little stubborn. There we go. So now we got the turbo knobs off. If you look down in there, you can actually see that there is a hex head nut that secures these switches to the faceplate. So those nuts are actually a 10 millimeter nut, and I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter deep well socket, stick it out in there, and get these nuts off of here. And once you do that, the board's gonna drop away from the top of the casing. Now we're gonna take the Ness Advantage controller and flip it back over. As you can see, all the buttons fell out. 
and we'll go ahead and set those off to the side. Look over the board a little bit, and it looks like there is a little bit of corrosion over here on these copper pads. There's also quite a bit of dust in here, so we're going to give this board a good thorough cleaning. And also, looking at this pad that came off one of the red buttons, you can tell it's damaged. So at some point in time, we're actually going to have to get a replacement pad for that button. Now we're going to go ahead and draw our attention to the joystick. In order to get the joystick out, there are these four screws right here that hold the entire assembly in there. And there you have it. There's the joystick assembly. So the joystick is actually just a glorified D-pad. It has these pads right here that push down on the board, which have contacts underneath, just like your A and B buttons. And then you also have this spring that gives it resistance for the joystick to go back in the center position. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and soak this top shell a little bit in some soapy warm water, scrub all that off, and while that's going, we're going to draw our attention to cleaning up this main board. To clean up the main board, what we're going to use is some 91% isopropyl alcohol and a fine soft bristle toothbrush. Now that we have the main board clean, we're going to go ahead and set it off to the side so it can dry. And we're going to direct our attention to this area of the joystick. So I have a spray bottle filled with 91% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm just going to squirt it down, hit it with a toothbrush, and get all of this dust off of here before I crack it open. And I don't know if you noticed while I was cleaning the main board, on the Q-tips that I used in order to get the uh, isopropyl alcohol off the board, they were starting to turn yellow. So that yellow junk, like right here on this Q-tip, is actually the leftover flux from when the board was manufactured. And what the manufacturer did is they left the flux on the board and just assembled it. Now, a lot of fluxes are corrosive in nature and can damage PCBs over time. There are also fluxes out there that is not necessary for you to clean off and that you can leave on the board. But me being the prudent person that I am, I went ahead and just cleaned all of that flux off of there just to make sure we won't run into any issues later on down the road. So to get into the circuit board itself to clean the contacts, what you need to do is very gently bend these two tabs back so you can get the main board out. And what I like to use is just a small flathead screwdriver. Give me a little leverage down here. Pull back on the tab. Whoop. And make sure you don't slip and also make sure you don't break the circuit board. So for this I noticed that this clip sets on top of this board a lot more so than this clip over here. So what I did is I took my flathead screwdriver, put it up underneath the board, and gently lift it up, and it just came right up. So we'll go ahead and separate them. And then underneath, you have rubber contacts. And we're going to go ahead and take these off. We'll give those a good cleaning. But first, we'll clean the board. Now we're going to go ahead and focus on these rubber contacts. And there we go. Then we're going to go ahead and clean all of this dust off of this controller. So all of this gray dust up here is actually powderized plastic from the top of the casing. And what happens is when this joystick is being moved around a lot, it's rubbing down the edges of that top casing plastic and it's grinding it into a nice fine powder. 
And just to get that off, spray it down with the uh, isopropyl alcohol and wipe it off with a rag. So after about 30 minutes or so, a little bit of scrubbing, and we got our face plate back, and it looks pretty darn good. Now, unfortunately, right here, the Nintendo logo is severely faded. It was like that when I got it, so there's not really a whole lot we can do about that. But now that the faceplate is clean, we can go ahead and start putting this back together. For starters, we'll go ahead and put the spring back in for the joystick. Stick the joystick down in here. Make sure that it lines up with these tabs. Then we're going to start putting these buttons back in. Alright, so now that I have all the buttons placed back in here, go ahead and seat the joystick and I'll take this pad off for now. What I want to do is go ahead and mount the joystick PCB into the main board. And we're just going to lay this board up here for now while we're doing that and we'll put in the four screws now and oops, sorry about bumping the camera and then once i get these tightened down we'll direct our attention over here to the main board and we're going to sandwich the board down in here Line up the rotary switches, flip it over, and we're ready to put the screws back in for the motherboard. So we have all the screws in, we're going to go ahead and seat the cable and bring in the bottom. Lay the bottom plate in, make sure everything sits appropriately, and, oh, wait a minute, almost forgot. We have two more screws to put in for the joystick, so we'll go ahead and do that now. Put in all six screws and send them home. Now it's time to put the washers and the nuts on for the turbo dials. And these just slide in like so. Also, these knobs have grooves on the insides of them. And those grooves help you line up the dot and where it's supposed to go. Make sure that the button's turned all the way to where the arrow is. Get in the right groove so you're right on that arrow and push it down in. There you go. Those work, those work. Player switch works. Start feels good, select feels good, and the slow button works. So we're gonna go ahead and take our joystick knob and put it back on. All that's left is to uh, plug it in and see if it works. Alrighty, so we have this NES Advantage hooked up to our NES system. The Player 1 port is actually going to take the connector that has the white line on the wire. Player 2 port is going to be the all-black wire for the Player 2 connection. So we'll go ahead and power on the NES system. And we have a copy of Super Mario Brother Duck Hunt. And we're just going to use Super Mario for our tests. Flip it over to player one. Hit start. Select a two-player game. Hit start. And it looks like it's working good so far. We have input for directions. A is working. See if we can turn on the turbo. 
see if that works. And it looks like the turbo doesn't appear to be working. Interesting. We'll crank turbo all the way up just to double check. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now turbo's working. All right. So the turbo is working for the A button. And let's do the slow. Yep, slow is working. So basically with the slow, what it does is uh, it pauses the game. And we'll hit start again so we can resume. And then we'll go ahead and die. And uh, we'll select the uh, two-player switch on the NES Advantage. Flip it over. And it looks like we have no input whatsoever. I've got no action out of the A button, but the turbo button is flashing. Nothing out of the start button. And nothing out of the slow button. Alrighty. So it looks like there might be a possibility that the player switch has an issue. Uh, it is quite frequent for these switches to have either debris that's gotten in there over time that's preventing the uh, switch from making a full contact to the other side. Or if for some reason there is an excess buildup of carbon, uh, what normally happens with electricity is if you have two points that are not connecting properly or where you have an arc, over time that arc creates a carbon black sooty buildup on the contact of the switch and that will cause the switch to no longer work anymore. So that could be a possibility with this controller. Also, there could be a possibility that the player two cable coming out of the back of the NES Advantage might have a connection issue and we might have to uh, check that cable to make sure it's going directly to the board. We don't have any broken contacts in the wire or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and save that uh, troubleshooting step for part two of our NES Advantage controller repair. And uh, on part two, we'll tear it back down, do some testing with the multimeter, see if we have continuity on the cable, and then we'll do some testing with the switch and the multimeter, see if we have continuity through the switch, and if not, we can desolder the switch from the main board, pull it apart, give it a cleaning, and see if that's what's causing our issue. Alrighty, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thank you for joining us as we tore apart this NES Advantage controller, got it all cleaned up and spick and span, making it look pretty darn good if I do say so myself. And through testing, it looks like uh, we're going to have some troubleshooting with this NES Advantage controller to do in order to get the Player 2 functionality to start working again. So we'll save that for another video. But either way, thank you for stopping by and joining us as we tore apart this controller, getting it all cleaned up and slapped back together. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up down below. If you'd like to see more of our videos as they come out, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And also make sure you hit that bell notification. And if you select all notifications, you won't miss out on any of the episodes that we release. You can also check us out on Facebook at Rehab Gaming YT, where we'll be broadcasting all of our ideas of future episodes that'll be coming out. It'll also give you a sneak peek of some of the stuff that we got in and uh, kind of give you a little better idea of what you can expect for content as we move through the process. And also, we have a couple of groups that we have joined, and there's a lot of people in these groups who are really knowledgeable relating to different platforms and games, and they'd be more than happy to answer any questions you may have if you run into any issues with your system or with your games, or if you're looking for that one specific copy of a game that you're missing on your collection and uh, you wanna try and get a hold of. So without further ado, Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you have a wonderful day.